Welcome to another video. This integration problem was question number two for 12th graders in the Estonian Mathematics Olympiad in 1999. So you would go, okay, it looks like something I've seen in any calculus textbook, but there's something about this that you expected to do because you see this kind of problem, if you try to integrate this, it's going to go on for a long time, relatively long time. The simplification might be too complicated and you might make mistakes. However, because you can see the bounds are from minus 1 to 1, you're thinking if only this was an odd function, I know the answer is going to be 0. The good thing about this is the answer is 0. But you have to show that this is an odd function and that's where the problem is. However, if you've done things like this or you've played with some other kinds of functions like this, like thirds, then you would be able to see that this might just be an odd function. Let's get into the video. Instead of going with the process of integration and then evaluating at the end, which is going to be a long process, you can try that out, we might as well investigate something about this function. Because remember, if f of x is odd, then the integral from minus a to a of f of x dx is equal to zero. You learned this in, in algebra, you learned this also, no, not in algebra, in calc one, okay? In calc one, we learned this one as the be very beginning of integration, that if you have an odd function and you're going from minus a to a, your answer will always be zero. We only need to show that this is an odd function. And if you go back to your algebra days, you remember how you know whether a function is odd or even. And we said that f of x is odd if the f of negative x is negative f of x. That is, if you can pull the minus sign from inside the argument to the back of the function, then it's an odd function. So we're going to try to do that here, to pull the minus sign from inside. Well, let's try. Let's see. Okay, so let's say let f of x be equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared. So this is our f of x in this case. What would be our f of negative x? So then f of negative x is going to be the natural log of negative x plus the square root of 1 plus negative x squared. So that tells us that f of negative x is equal to, this is going to be the natural log of negative x plus, now when we square this, it's just positive, the square root of 1 plus x squared. So remember that our mission is to show that f of negative x equals negative f of x. So if you look at this closely, this is f of negative x, it's written this way. We want to show that it is equal to, if you just have a minus sign behind this function. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Is it possible that this is the same thing as negative natural log of x plus the square root of x, sorry, 1 plus x squared, 1 plus x squared, squared. I'm going to put a question mark here. Because there is no algebra that I know that can just pull this minus sign, not even from both of them. <laughs> Did you see that? Just pull this minus sign. You can't even pull it out. 
here without changing the sign here, let alone take it outside the function. And the natural log function is not even an even or an odd function. You don't know. It is neither even nor odd, so it's not like the sine function or the cosine function that we can tell if they're even or odd. So this is going to be such that we have to think well. So something I would like you to see, let's use complex numbers, okay, just so you see how this works. Look, 1 plus i. If you try to, if you flip this 1 plus i, see what how happens. The reciprocal of 1 plus i is equal to 1 over 1 plus i multiplied by, if you try to do the rationalization, it's going to be 1 minus i over 1 minus i. So you're multiplying, okay? If you multiply the top, you have 1 minus i. If you multiply the bottom, you're going to have 1. And what you're going to have here is going to be minus i squared, which is 1 plus 1, which gives you 2. 1 plus 1, 1 minus i squared, which is 1 minus i over 1 minus minus 1, which is 1 minus i over 2. So you can clearly say, you can say the reciprocal of this number is half of its conjugate. The reciprocal of a complex number, this particular one, is half of its conjugate. So, if you go here, we can apply the same thing because this is what we have, this is what we want. There is no manipulation we can do for what we have, but if we can show that what we want is exactly what we have, then this equation will be correct. Then we have shown that it is an odd function because it looks like we can pull the minus sign and take it all the way to the back. So just to do that, I am going to rewrite this and say that f of minus x will be equal to, I'm going to make the minus b on this side, so let's just write natural log of the square root Let's write it as the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. Okay, let's just leave it that way. Okay, but we are questioning whether it is the same thing as this. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay, now with the question mark. Is this the same thing as, now look at the laws of logarithms. We know that this minus is the same thing as moving it as an exponent here to raised to the power minus 1. So this can be the same thing as ln of plus x. Can we show that this is the same thing as this? You can already see that this is this, this hope because of what I just explained here. Okay, so let's just work on this one. Okay, so note. That 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared plus x multiplied by, so I'm trying to just do the conjugate of this. I'll take the conjugate. I'm going to ignore the natural log. We'll go back and fill it up. So note that this, if you multiply it by its conjugate, is the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x over the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. So this is what we're going to be multiplying. And nicely, you can easily see equals, let's multiply. It's going to be the top, which is the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. And the bottom part, what would it be? If you multiply this by this, every time you multiply conjugates, you get rid of the square. There's a minus and you square this. That's what you always get. So don't worry about you doing the math. Just square the first one. If you square this, you're going to get rid of the square sign, of the square root sign. That's 1 plus x squared. And then there's going to be a minus sign in the middle. And you're going to square the second one. It's going to be x squared. Do you see what the answer has turned out to be? It is basically 
1 plus x squared under the square root sign minus x divided by, see this cancels this over 1. That's just it. It's the square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. Sorry. Come on. Which is exactly what we're saying, the argument here. That's true. So I can confidently say that this is true. So, based on note, okay, let's do this. <laughs> based on note, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. f of negative x is negative f of x because that's our negative f of x and you've established it just by just doing the conjugate this is a strategy i've seen used in many of the g advanced exams so you want to make sure you recognize it don't freak out when you see a complicated integral try to just do something like this and somehow they're going to save you and because we've shown that this is equal to this implies that f of x is an odd function and because it's an odd function this claim is true because our a is one one and we have a function and it's equal to zero okay i'm gonna get rid of the note i wish i could write it no therefore the integral from negative one to one of the natural log of, what do we have? The natural log of x plus one uh, square root of one plus x squared dx is equal to zero, done. No, we're not doing a proof. We're actually evaluating, okay. <laughs> But that's it. Actually, that's it. I just, I just wanted to do this because I've seen it used before and it's a very important skill to have that the reciprocal of um, complex numbers might give you a nicer representation of those complex numbers or sometimes it is um, third numbers in third form and you might re do the reciprocal by conjugation and then you get something that's a lot nicer. I actually saw another problem recently. Okay, thanks for watching. If this video made sense, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section and thank you. And by the way, I was able to establish a store on Teespring so you start seeing my shirts being advertised and please leave a comment about the design. If there's something else you'd like to see, I was just trying something new. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning, because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.